What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we are gonna get my new garage all spick and span for the cars. I just bought a house and as a car guy, I need my garage to look super nice. So yesterday we spent many hours completely scrubbing the concrete to get it ready. It was so completely dirty, covered in things that you can't even imagine. It was absolutely disgusting in here. So we sweeped it out, we hosed it out about three times and then we used TSP, which is trisodium phosphate. We used that and we did two scrubbings of the concrete to really deep clean it. And then we used the Rust-Oleum Garage Kit. It's a two-part epoxy. This kit comes with everything you're gonna need. It does a really cool gray color. You can also get it in all these custom tints. And then we have the blue, gray, and black uh, paint chip flakes. So as you can see, we have the one gallon and then the little one right here. And over here, I've already stirred it. You have to stir it for three minutes and then let it sit for a half an hour. And this is gonna turn into the epoxy. So from here, now it's time to actually epoxy the floor. All right guys, so we are now working on some cutting in and everything. You just saw a little bit of the time lapse of us actually cutting in. Now, like I said, we're just using a normal paint roller and you're gonna wanna roll it onto the garage. So you're just gonna wanna do like one direction and then the other direction just to make sure your coverage is really nice and thick. And then once we get a nice spot covered like that, let me show you how to do the flakes. So all you do, just put a little bit in your hand and you kind of just sprinkle it like that. And uh, kind of do it randomly, whatever works for you. And since we're doing the footer, I'll try to you know, throw some at the side or something like that. But this is basically all there is to it. And uh, we're just gonna keep working, set you guys up on the time lapse, and uh, pick up with the next step. All right guys, so welcome to three days later. I have now walked on the garage for the first time and it looks really, really good. I love how the epoxy turned out and especially the gray color, it definitely looks really nice. And I love all the little specks. You can see it's a pretty good, even consistency for the pattern. We almost ran out. We had to save a little bit left to do the exterior side and uh, we just had enough to get it done. The little footers around the edge were pretty hard to get anything to stick. But at least we got a little bit on it just to kind of tie in the entire color and everything. So from here, it's time to start getting the walls and ceilings prepped for paint. Now they are completely filthy. This garage was never used the way I'm gonna use my garage. Uh, he's got a dartboard right here, the previous owner. And as you can see, he was not really too good. There are all holes under it and above it. They just ripped all the anchors out. I'm gonna get this ugly rack out of here, same with that shelf. And then you can see up the whole ceiling, there are cobwebs and stuff all up there. And then I'm gonna take that off. So let's get on to cleaning, wiping things down, removing the shelves, and then we'll fill some holes. So I have finished up patching pretty much every hole. It's hard to tell on this side, but as we get to where there is some paint, it kind of looks like a cow in here with all the white spots on it. You can see where his dartboard was, the perfect circle. And uh, yeah, so those are all patched. The lower shelf and everything is patched. And then the other dartboard and then a few more.
So what you just saw was me sanding all the putty spots, so now all the holes are nice and smooth, and then I mopped the ceiling and mopped the walls. That was a mixture of water and Dawn dish soap, and coming out this morning, this is now a new day, it smells nice and fresh in here. It smelled really dingy before anything, um, and now it's actually looking really good. All the cobwebs are gone, and uh, everything looks nice and clean. So it is on to the day of paint. Now before we actually start painting, I need to seal all the drywall and plaster. So I've picked up some PVA, as you can see, and I'm gonna do that on all the walls, even the painted wall. But I get all of this stuff all sealed nicely, same with the ceiling. And I did go ahead and get a nice little LED light, as you can see right there. And it is super bright. When the door is closed, that thing lights up really nice and it is configurable. You can actually twist it. I'll have that link down below. It's only 35 bucks and it plugs right into the socket. So I have good lighting in here now, but let's get on to sealing this thing and then we can finally paint it. So all the sealant is now done in the garage, the walls and ceiling. And then off camera, I went ahead and painted the actual ceiling in the white paint. Uh, no need to film that obviously, since it's white on white, you wouldn't really see much. And then I've already started off camera cutting in the entire garage. You can see all the hard to reach areas are all done. I'm gonna show you a little spot up on the ceiling. This is how I did it in the entire house. And uh, it's a really cool little tool that I got here. It's a basically a little square and you can see how one side we have wheels on it and it makes it very easy to cut in. So all you have to do, I found these uh, little trays that work really well with it. So you take this basically, and you just scoop a little bit of paint onto it. And you can see how we have a little bit there. And the way this tray is designed, you can easily wipe off any excess just to give you a better surface. And depending on how big of a spot you need, you, know, you can wipe off more and more. So with this little bit of paint on it, I'm gonna come up here to the spot that I have not done yet. So as you can see, we have it cut in there and cut in there. The best way I've found to do it is kind of take this just to get the paint wet and onto the actual surface. And then once it's kind of flattened out so where it's not too liquidy, I'm gonna flip this around and use these little wheels against the ceiling itself. And we're gonna get a really, really good line going. And look at that, nearly perfect. I had a few hiccups when I was learning how to use this, but it really does come in handy. You can get a pretty good spot done. Then you can wipe a little excess off if you miss a spot and carefully go back over it and just wipe off any extra. But that's basically what I did to the entire ceiling and I went ahead and used it on the flooring. And then just, you can either use this tool or a paintbrush to get all the corners in. But we are looking really good now. And now when I wake up tomorrow morning, it is time to finally paint it and get this thing looking good. And just like that, we're finally done. So in today's video, this actually was about a two week process from the first clip till right now. 
Uh, it has been a hectic two weeks. At the same time, of course, I had other obligations. We completely repainted and repaired all the walls on the inside of the house. It took us four days to clean the inside of the house and then three days to repaint everything. Previous owners absolutely trashed this place. And this garage, the videos and pictures do not do it just the way this thing looked. It was absolutely disgusting and filthy in here. It was, it was absolutely horrible. But now I am so blown away. The garage floor, the full brand new epoxy looks amazing. And then all of these walls, they look so nice and clean. My ceiling, perfectly clean and white. That LED light is actually really, really good. I'm really happy with that. And at the same time with all this moving stuff in the last two weeks, my motorcycle has been at my parents' house because obviously I can't drive and ride all my vehicles at the same time. My GTR has been at my brother's house for the last week and my lawnmower has been at my parents' house too. So I finally got all of my vehicles back at the house and we are now ready for the first time with my completed garage to put the GTR inside. with the GTR parked in the garage for the first time with it all finalized. I think the layout, I'm gonna keep the GTR over on this side. We're gonna have the Lexus on the other side with my bike since it's a shorter vehicle. And now there's one last thing to do which is gonna pain me to do this, but I gotta put some holes in the wall real quick. And I gotta say that is so painful after patching hundreds and hundreds of holes on all these walls. All right, so with the GTR flag now all installed onto the wall and the GTR back to its normal position, we got the Lexus on the other side and the R6, and we are all complete, completely renovating my garage, turning it from a trashed, horrible area to a really nice setup that I am proud to call my garage. And then fast forward a little bit from a quick trip to Lowe's and Home Depot and a few Amazon orders arriving, but I picked up some wing nuts to replace the standard bolts on the handle of the lawnmower just to fold that so I can easily store that in a much smaller, more compact area. I got a 100 foot flexible hose with the actual hose handle and everything all set up for car wash things. You will notice that is the trunk liner from my 370Zs from back in the day. So that's my nice little carpet right here. And then I'm really proud of the new workbench toolbox storage. So we can open this up. We got nine drawers. I've organized it a little bit. Got a few things in here so far. Battery tender things, all my microfibers and things like that. My wireless speaker setup. This does have power too. We have a whole power panel with USB ports and you can see the plug right there with my extension cord. And I got a heck of a deal on this workbench. So this was actually listed as a cobalt branded item at Lowe's website for $350. However, talking with them, going to the store and everything, they are completely out of stock nationwide. They can't even order one. So I went to Home Depot and they had the exact same thing with the Husky logo on it. It's the same dimension, same drawers, same every single aspect to it. So I'm pretty confident that this one and the one at Lowe's were the exact same supplier. So I talked to them and was able to get them to price match the competitor's price. So this one was listed at 430 bucks, got it for 350. And then everything else I got pretty inexpensive as well. But that is gonna wrap it up now, turning this garage into something pretty sweet. That was so much work on my end, but super well worth it for sure. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.